Welcome back to the channel guys, my name is James Hayes, this is Intentionally Broke, and on today's episode of Why Would You Do That? We are watching bad financial videos on TikTok. It's a what I spend in a month video. My name is Vera, I am a full-time auto shop manager, and I am an impulse spender. She's an I impulse spender. <laughs> That's, that's the worst thing you could possibly be. Almost as bad as being a full-time YouTuber, a car salesman. You could put three bodies in it, just kidding. And a Jehovah's Witness. I just recently got started on trying to track and control my finances because to be honest, nobody in my family ever taught me how to do it and I'm 26 and I have nothing to show for it. Oh, okay, she's 26, she's got a good job, she says she's got nothing to show for it and the old excuse of my family never taught me. Babe, there's Google, you can Google, you can do the Googling. I haven't invested a penny, I haven't saved a dime, I don't know how to. And how do you not know how to save money? Saving is very simple, investing is very simple. It's only as complicated as you need to make it. You need to learn these things. You're 26, you should at least have a net worth of at least $50,000. Seriously? Seriously. I'm actually really ashamed and I feel really guilty of the numbers that I'm gonna share with you. Being ashamed of making bad financial mistakes, I can understand that we all spend money on stupid sometimes that's just the way life is however if you are willing to accept that and move on the thing is when it comes to these things is once you accept you've got a problem the damage is already done move on forgive yourself move forward you are only going to hold yourself back if you keep looking backwards i feel like i keep seeing like 23 year olds with perfect bank accounts <sighs> Socking away money and I'm jealous of them and I want to do no, 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 don't be jealous. Never be jealous. Everyone is on a different journey. Jealousy gets you nowhere. Being inspired by someone doing better financially, that's great. Asking questions to those who are doing better financially, that's also great. But what you do not do is feel jealous. Never feel jealous. Be happy for people who are doing better than you. If you genuinely have the ability to save and invest, you should be doing that. You know what? The best thing about self-inflicted problems is you can fix it. That is your choice. So I'm going to figure it out. Um, the program that I'm using is actually a book. It's called Your Money or Your Life. And it is a nine step program to figuring out like financial independence, which is super awesome. The biggest thing that I'm going to share today is actually this is today is my first month of tracking all of my purchases. That's incredible. I love it when people do this. Here's the thing. She might be in the worst financial position that she's ever been in and ever will be. But the thing is, once you start getting better, this is the worst it's ever going to be. Like I said, I'm not proud of these numbers. Okay, something needs to change and I knew that and I'm going to do it. I like how she says, I'm going to do it. Not, I'm going to try. I'm going to give this my best shot. She's doing well. She's accepted she's got a problem. She's going to show us the numbers. I wonder what the numbers are. I've not seen this video. This whole concept is new to me. So let's, let's see. So we're just going to jump right into it. In the first week of this month that I was tracking, I spent $220, which is, to be honest, very, very low. I feel like that's probably the least I've ever spent in a week in my whole entire life. She spent that. That would be discretionary. If she's doing that a year, that's over $10,000. Just poof, gone, disappeared. I make 56k a year and it just goes out. Ah! You make 50k a year! $50,000 a year and you're spending $10,000. And if, if $200 a week is her good week, that's terrible! But the good thing about this is we know that she's got discretionary income, meaning this is money that she can waste. Meaning she can use this money to pay off debt or save or invest. So it's not all doom and gloom. Week two, I made $1,112. Week three, not made, spent $1,112. Week three, $1,642. Okay, which is earning $50,000 a year. That is $1,000 a week. With tax, probably $700, she's saying. And she spent $1,600. Nah, oh, I, wonder, I wonder if she's in debt. $1,185. So two big mistakes I made this month was one, I got the Minnesota 
frontline worker pay because I work in the auto industry. I'm in and out of people's cars all the time. Um, so I got frontline worker pay, which was $400. And then I also found an old 401k and just took it out in cash. I, hang on. She gets e an extra $400. She doesn't think to save or invest. There's your biggest problem. And she's taken out of her retirement. And this is the time that she's tracking her spending. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, maybe she didn't go into debt for this. Should have just rolled it over, but it was only a grand, and I was like, Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It's only a thousand dollars. Oh my gosh. What? A, I'll, maybe I'll just deposit it in my savings account. I didn't do that. I don't know how to save money. Okay, I spent it. How do you not know how to save money? At this point, it's just simple. It's more of a psychological thing. And you've got to work out what you want. What do you want? Oh. What it do you want? This is why I talk about understanding what you want all the time. What do you want in your future? Especially if, you're, if you've if got a 401k, that means you're American, meaning there's no such thing as forced retirement. Here in Australia, we have superannuation, where our employers have to to spend 10.5% of what we earn and put that into our superannuation, which is our retirement fund. We have forced savings here because the government doesn't trust us as individuals to put aside money for our retirement. In America, if you are not saving for your retirement, putting any, any money into a 401k, you're absolutely f So do you want to retire on $70 a day or whatever peanuts the government gives you? Or do you want to retire a multi-millionaire? And you can do that. Look into the S&P 500. Look into compound interest. It talks about compound interest. It's interest on interest on interest on interest. So she's 26. Say she wants to retire at 65. What is that? 30, 40, 50, 60, 40 years of work. I'm just checking your math on that. Yes. I got the same thing. Let's just say she's putting $100 a week and we know she can afford to do so because she's wasting $200 on a good week. Deposit that weekly, 40 years at a compound interest rate of 7%. Now the S&P 500 averages 11 to 12% a year. Adjusted for inflation, adjusted for inflation, at 7% a year. That's on average. She would retire with a million dollars if she just stopped what she's doing, put $100 a week into the S&P 500. That is what historical numbers have shown. And that's what pisses me off about spending like this. It's people don't know. And it's okay to be ignorant. A baby doesn't know that fire is going to hurt them. A baby just touches the fire. because. No, it's free. And then once they know it hurts, it becomes common sense. It's okay to be ignorant. It's okay to not know these things. And my other big mistake was using DoorDash literally every day. I'll break it down into categories. For no, 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 no. I'll put up on screen here. My partner and I did eight meals for $32 Australian. I'll convert that into a, a American here. For eight meals, porterhouse steak, Asian noodle salad. It's incredible. Look, I spent $1,600 on bills, $100 on gas, $430 on groceries and $950 on eating out. That is just ridiculous. You spent $400 on groceries. Somehow that's not enough. You got to put $900 on DoorDash. 